Hi, Leanne Bridges here. Uh, do you ever feel like the last number of months <laughs> this year has been almost like a dream? I know often I'll be immersed into some of my work or something I love, and, and then all of a sudden remember, oh yeah, this is 2020, this is what's going on outside of me, and go, oh, it's almost like I'm waking up to a, a dream, or it's almost like a spell. And everything we do seems to have an impact on that thing that's going on. So one of the things I want to talk about today is how we move beyond that into 2021. As, a, as we stand now, you know, we started this year and we were very positive about 2020 being this great year. And, and if we only had hindsight, what we would be thinking now, who knows? Um, but, and then we thought things were going to last for a little bit and, and, and they've got this, this whole thing has gotten more and more into our aspects of our lives. Every aspect, our family, our work, our relationships with people, everything has changed and in the process of changing. And for a lot of people, um, there's a lot of things that are good that have changed, but there's also a lot of things that have been very, very difficult. And so one of the things to ask yourself as you're moving into the new year, ending this year off, would it benefit you to kind of look at what, what's been going on and, and how way to kind of move into the new year that's more um, filled with joy, peace, connection, freedom for you? And if that's something that you're interested in, then listen up to this video because I want to tell you how to move in that direction to kind of break what I call the dream spell of 2020 and move into a new 2021 for you. Stay tuned. Um, when we want to change our reality, we have to actually tune out of the existing reality and start to tune into a new one. What does that mean? Well, it's the idea that what we focus on, we create. The more we focus on it, the more we create it. The more we resist something, the more it persists. And we've heard some of these ideas bantered around. But if you look at a couple of examples, if you look at the placebo effect, where when somebody really believes that they're taking a medication that's going to help them, that they will get better. And you see in almost 30% of all medical trials, there's a placebo effect. And the nocebo effect is the same. When you believe that something is bad for you, um, they've seen where people are diagnosed, misdiagnosed with disease and they get sick and then afterwards find out they never had the disease. It's because they were told that. So what we focus on, positive or negative, really can have a, a large impact. So look at what's been going on for this year. All of, our, all of humanity has been focused on something that creates a lot of fear. And I don't mean just um, the, the virus and other things, but the, there's fear of, of, of getting sick, there's fear of dying, there's also fear of loss of sovereignty, loss of freedom of oppression. There's a whole spectrum of fear and almost, there's almost not many people on the planet that haven't effect, have been affected by some sort of fear. And what comes from fear then is um, we often want to control things. We want to judge others because they don't get what we're doing. They're, they, they want us to, to conform to the way that, that they see things. I do the same thing, uh, probably you do. Depending, you know, no matter where you position yourself in terms of your ideologies around what's been happening over the last year, at the root of what the, some of the negative, less beneficial feelings and reactions are at the root of that is fear and fear creates um, an energy that wants to control and and from that also judging judging that the other is bad so i have to control myself or other so what we want to do is start to release that fear and start to recognize the power that we have to manifest and while we can't change the whole world necessarily <laughs> in one instant we can change our own world and you've probably seen that in your own life. You've seen some of the benefits, some of the wonderful gifts of this year, whether it's, you know, having, you know, to work from home, you may, may or may not like spending more time with family, um, spending more downtime, being out more in nature, um, having like a shift in what, how you see things. There's so many beautiful gifts that are happened from things that are difficult. And so when we focus on the positives, we bring more of that into our lives. And so you'll see around you, there'll be people who are really not thriving, who are really, really struggling. 
and there are ones who are thriving more. And the, the key difference um, is, is where they're, they're focusing, where they're paying their attention to and what they're trying to do. Now, I wanna just caveat here, not to say that people who are having difficult things happening in their life are doing uh, anything wrong. We have challenging times for lots of reasons. Part of it is it's part of a natural cycle. People come and go in our life. People end up having to die at some point. We don't live forever. Um, we, we lose things. We get sick. All, a lot of these things are part of our natural cycle. Um, but it's the resistance to that that causes us so much more suffering. When we resist, um, you know, that someone has to leave, like my husband who, had to, who passed away, the resistance creates a lot more grief than maybe if I was not in resistance. So when we look at these things are happening as natural course, and that part of it is also for us to see the contrast, the, the things in our lives that really bring us joy and the things that don't so that we can choose. You know, if we're, we've been in a, in a job and we lose that job, we think it's a terrible thing, but it may be the first time where we see that actually we weren't thriving, we weren't in a lot of joy. And that even though there's fear of, of loss, there is an opportunity for us to find something much greater. So I think most of us know this on some level, but we don't necessarily practice it on a day-to-day -day basis. We know that what we focus on, like an athlete's another thing, athletes know really well when they focus on their goal, their vision of what they wanna create, they can manifest it much better and not always, you know, I'm sure when you go to the Super Bowl, there's one team focusing on the, 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 both teams are focusing on winning. But at the same time, the more we do that, the more likely we are going to get uh, more and more outcomes that we hope for. So let's just talk a little bit about that. How do you do that? How do you start to vision where you want to go in the midst of not only your own personal life where things might be very challenging, but in a society right now where everyone's experiencing it. You know, never before have we had that. Often we'll all have our different times in our life where we really struggle, but to all be going through it at the same time. So one of the things I really recommend is to tune out, <laughs> change the channel, tune out a lot of the media um, because it's designed to incite drama. You know, put it that way. Drama creates followers and followers watch just like a movie we watch a scary movie or dramatic movie a dramatic love story we get pulled in because we want to feel that and we want to watch it um, but it's designed it's kind of like inherent in order to get the viewers they have to make it more dramatic so we're always seeing the most the biggest drama it's like a, you know I love the saying Jesus had was turn the other cheek and most of us think of that as you know to be slapped or to, um, to say, okay, you hit this cheek, turn the other cheek. And, um, you know, that's like forgiveness, which I think there's, there's quite a bit of that idea in that, I, um, that message. But I also feel that turning the cheek when you don't like something turns your vision somewhere else so you can ignore it for a while. You may hear it still, but you are ignoring it for a short period of time. And when we just turn our attention, turn our cheek another way, just for a little bit, we take all of our energy or part of our energy out of that drama that's getting our nervous systems like this right now. So as we think about moving into the new year, always, always new starts help us quite a bit. We can start to prepare ourselves and start into the holiday season. More and more of this energy and more, more things are happening, you know? Um, it seems like instead of the media getting and stuff going on in the media getting better, it's getting worse. And, it's, and I, I believe that in the next month, it's gonna probably be at a feverish pitch for, on so many different levels. So even more important for you to turn the other cheek, to disconnect for a little bit and, do, and be able to connect with your own self and your own source. So where do, where do we start? Is first is to start to know ourselves. What are the things that we really love? What, what brings a lot of meaning to us? so that we can start to create a new vision as we go into the new year. So, you know, what is it about your health, your well-being, not just your physical health, but your mental health, your emotional health, and your spiritual energetic health? What is it that it looks like to you that would be in, in complete holistic health? 
And if you can even imagine that, maybe you can't, maybe you have some chronic diseases or challenges and it's hard for you to imagine. But even if you could try just for a bit to imagine, what is the relationships that you want to bring into your life? What is the kind of work that you would like? So starting to imagine that, but it takes it, you getting to know yourself as you see the things that come up that maybe don't serve you as well anymore. It's something that we don't want to push down. So let's say, for example, you see a, a dream kind of job that you would love, but you go, well, I can't do that. I'm not, I don't have the degrees. No one will take me and, and so forth. Then you're actually getting to know yourself. It's good. You're starting to see what you love. You're starting to observe almost like from that observer point of view. It's like you're watching a movie saying, oh, I would like, to have this kind of job or move into a new industry or start my own business, let's say. But then I'm also, I'm observing the joy that I feel and, and the excitement, but I'm also seeing the fear and the dread or the doubt, whatever that might come up. So you're learning something about yourself rather than judging it, just like we judge others for not agreeing with our point of view. When we can let go of that and just be and allow them to be as, and allow us to be, we have to start with letting go of judgment of ourselves. So in that process of starting to really get to know yourself, asking the questions, what brings meaning to me? What have I always loved to do? What makes time flow for me? Without worrying about whether it can, something could happen or not. And so that bringing more of that into your life will help you to do that turning the cheek, taking your attention, your gaze away from the dream spell this, this crazy, massive spell that's across our planet right now. If you picture it metaphorically or energetically, it's like we are in this dream. And so you want to wake up from that. And 11 years ago, I started my own awakening process when I lost my husband, often a big catalyst, uh, you know, a death of a loved one, a loss of a job, a divorce, um, an illness, all those kind of things can push us right into a greater awakening uh, uh, to a higher level of our own consciousness, to greater connection to ourselves. That started for me um, 11 years ago. For many people, it's starting for the first time right now through this 2020. This is one of the biggest gifts of this year. But we have to awaken from this dream spell. And it's hard to. It's like we're cozy in our bed. We don't want to wake up until someone starts throwing water on us and shaking us. We have to get up and start to wake up. And to say that this, this awakening is not a one-time shot, one-shot thing, which is a forever like opening of, I guess, the lotus, one, one leaf at a time, one petal at a time. And so when we do, the process is to go within and to see what comes up for us, to see the, the resistance, to see the, the, the inspiration that comes, and to be able to sort that out. It's only in our quietness that we can see that, oh, okay, that's my fear coming up again. What can I do about that? How can I overcome that rather than squishing it down? How can I actually allow it to feel it and, and release it and let it go? So many of us hold in our bodies, actually all of us do, hold in our bodies our resistance. So if you're looking for where you might have resistance, one of the first things to do is look at your, you know, do a body scan. Where are you uh, uncomfortable, out of alignment, having dis-ease? Dis You'll notice that that's a metaphorical place for, for you. You know, recently I was speaking to somebody and they were talking about their weight and they recognized they had such a hard time losing weight. And what they were, when they really dove into it, it was because of, it's a protection, a protection for what, you know, she needed to go through to understand what that protection is. We all have that in our, in our bodies. And it's one of the most amazing mechanisms to tell us where we're at, but also in our life, looking around our work, our relationships, they're a reflection of what we've created from our past thoughts. Um, you know, maybe, a, yesterday, a month ago, a year ago, or 10 years ago. It's our persistent thoughts that I have created. And the same can be said for a globally and collectively a 2020. We have created what's happened right now. We may not have, you know, been in a lab and created something and it, and it got out and went on bats and did all this kind of thing. But in our, in our desire for a more fair and equitable um, free society, in for more healthy 
um, uh, bodies and nature and better connections and everything we want to, that in that desire, there's been the contrast of not having it, having polluted uh, our planet, having unfair um, economic and societal systems. And so in our desire for something greater, we've cried out for something, um, something new. And in the new is a bit of a breakdown of the old. We don't want to get rid of the baby with the bathwater, but there is a, a need for a breakdown. And so in some way, we called in this dream spell and we to help us to awaken. As it becomes harder and harder, we're going through the birth canal of birthing something new, but it's difficult. And so for us to help ourselves, we need to see what the light is. What is the light at the end of the tunnel? And it's different for each one of us. It, it's reflecting of your own gifts. What you want to do in this world, how you want to express yourself is very much a reflection of your gifts. What are your gifts? Again, how do you find those? They are very much in what you love and what brings meaning to you and your unique style of how you operate in the world. As if you're more someone who loves to teach or you're someone who loves to help or you're more of a protector. There's so many different ways that we express ourselves art, as an artist. It's that those deep gifts that are longing to come out and to express themselves. And so much of what we've done over the years have kind of hidden those so that we're walking around kind of like robots, not even connected to our gifts. And that causes stress that ends up causing disease and, um, and then affects our relationships and, and all parts of our life. So this invitation now is for us to break out of the dream spell, the dream spell that we've created, um, that we've probably called in for us to be able to ascend to the higher awareness. And so the, the, the key, the first key step is to really start to, to go within and to start to, to create a new vision, to turn your cheek away from what's existing right now. It doesn't have to be 24 seven, but even for a little bit in each day to turn away from, from what's happening and focus on, okay, this is where I wanna go. This is what I, the timeline that I want to create. This is the future that I want to create. And the more you're over there, you change your whole chemistry of your body because you're in more joy you're in more excitement you're inspired you can see where you want to go and the and you're bringing in not only your passion but purpose because it's when we start to think about how we actually help somebody else something else the planet animals um bringing beauty to the world whatever it might be that's when we really really have an opportunity to heal ourselves when I was in my deepest grief after losing my husband, the thing that helped me the absolute most was when I was able to start to think about the kind of life and the work and the service that I wanted to create in the world, the way that I wanted to impact the world. And I started to create uh, an idea for my existing business, Designing Transformation. When I would just spend a half an hour, an hour, a day in that, it would help me so much from my deepest grief. It allowed me to get out of the focus on where I was and where my life was, turn my cheek and focus on a new future. And that was like a bomb, a soothing, a B-A-L-M, a soothing of my soul to help me through the grief. It wasn't that I wanted to completely ignore. I had to go through those, the grief, experience it, feel it, express it, and release it. But I also had those times of awe and wonder to help me through. So it's a bit of a balance. And one of the things, so when we think about um, focusing on something new, it takes a lot of discipline because we're easily distracted and easily brought back into, especially when we're really hooked into media. And we're hearing a lot now how these media, social media especially, are designed to keep us hooked. So it's really important that you disconnect, even for a little bit of time. And or focus on media for some time that's really uh, empowering. And there's so much out there right now. There's a lot more on YouTube that you can, through your own choice and selection, find the right things. Um, on Netflix and Gaia Media, very documentaries, very positive things that, that can help support your vision of what you would like to see in the world, not what's wrong, what's terrible, what's horrible, what's not working. I think we know a lot of that already. We need to focus on where we want to rebuild. And so that, that discipline to keep every day focused on where you want to go, even if it's for 15 minutes to half an hour is really key. And so I recommend people have a practice in the morning, ideally, 
finding a, a space in your home to be quiet, coffee, a tea, whatever warm, um, quiet your mind for a bit, listen to music, whatever helps you to go within, maybe journal, um, to start to really just tap into who are you? What are, what do you really love? What is, what are the things that are coming up for you? And when you see the things coming up to experience them, maybe, as I said, journal about them, start to discover why that is. Maybe talk to a, a, a beloved friend that you trust to help you through some of these things, being out in nature. These are the things that you, if you do on a daily basis will help you to keep focusing onto that new direction where you want to go. And so rec how do you stay in that practice? Well, to, to be persistent requires you to say, what is the benefit of this for me? Why do I want to break this dream spell? Why do I want a new 2021? Why do I want to, you know, take my attention away? Because it takes energy, it takes focus and discipline to do that. Why? I have to think about what, how will that benefit me? And when you can think of that benefit, will you make you happier? Will it maybe bring you to something new relationships or health or whatever for you? If you can see the end benefit, that's the carrot that keeps you doing it. So that's very critical. We think about losing weight. It was like, okay, I got to do it. Well, unless I can see a real benefit of what it is and keep tapped into that benefit and feel it in my inside of me, then that will keep me to the daily practice. So there's the, there's how will I benefit but also releasing judgment. So when we see the, you know, the things coming up, their triggers, the things that stop us from staying on track, the things that bring us back to the dream spell, not to judge ourselves, just to notice in the curious and compassionate way, the more we are not judging of ourselves, the less we will judge others. And the less we judge others, the more connections we make, and that creates a ripple effect. Well, right now, and because of the, the stream spell, we're very polarized in our beliefs and our ideas around it. All, every one of us based in fear of some sort or other. All of us based in some sort of judgment. We can say, oh, I don't judge, I don't, I'm not fearful, but we all are at the root. And so whether we're, we're worried about our safety or our health or our, our freedom or whatever it might be, our, our, our income or be able to express ourselves and our gifts in the world, whatever it is, we all have something. Um, so for us to be okay with that and not to judge ourselves and not to, to project that judgment and fear onto the fear onto others, which ends up often being in judgment. And then, um, to really surrender to the process. Surrendering means knowing that where you want to go by just focusing a little bit on it is starting to create it and it's there. Even though when we keep coming back here, we see, oh, it doesn't look like this is ever going to happen, this other route. But just you surrender to the knowing, the knowing that you are creating it through your thoughts, thoughts through your emotions, and then through inspired action. Only when you're really inspired, not inspired because of fear, like I have to do something because if I don't, I have FOMO or I have, you know, I'm, I'm going to miss out something or I have to do it. I have to force it to happen. It's no, it's less of the doing and more of the being. Your being's not doers, but we have forgotten that. That's part of the dream spell. We've forgotten that we are beings. We're, we are energetic, spiritual beings having an earthly physical experience. We came here to decide because it's fun and exciting to have a physical body and all the sensations. But we've forgotten that we actually are much greater than that. We think we're just this physicality and we have to do, 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 do and make it all happen. And we're more, more and more of us are starting to wake into the fact that we don't when we are more aligned with that vision, feeling it, seeing it, seeing what comes up that goes in resistance to that, working through it, letting it go without judgment, but compassion for ourselves, we see the ripple effect on others. So the last is really to just follow your inspiration, the deepest inspiration, get to know what that is, where you, you feel, oh yeah, I have to do something. Is it really coming from a place of fear or from a real love and inspiration? And know your own self where for me, I have to, I get inspired, but I have to spend some time feeling it through. Each person is different in how they how they work with that so as you're, you're imagining your new direction and getting in more of that alignment with with what it will feel like what it'll look like how you'll benefit from it and working through the things that are going to stop you and just listening to the inspiration and feeling what it, it's like for you and then moving in that direction when you know it's right 
you know that you have that in, within you. So those are some of the tips to really um, get beyond the dream spell, to recognize it, it is for it is what it is, to identify how you would benefit, <clears throat> to awaken a little bit from it and move into a new way in 2021, to see and create your own vision through your own self-examination and knowledge, <clears throat> working through the things that block you, and, and then doing it on a regular basis, following your inspiration. And when we do that, you'll see little by little, 2021 will, could be a very different year for you. And as we do it more and more collectively, it'll happen on a larger scale. But we don't have to wait for the rest of the world to do it. We don't have to wait even for our family to do it or anyone that we work with. We just have to do it for ourselves. And when we do that, we see the incredible results. I've had myself one of the best years of my life. Not because um, I don't have compassion for what's happening around me. I see it. I feel very deeply for it. And I've had a lot of fears for my own family and, and friends and, and work and, and so forth. But in the working through it um, and in the doing some of the things and the being uh, I mentioned here, I have increased my awareness and my being to such a level that I can to see it from a greater perspective and enjoy the unfolding and seeing the awakening that's happening and just marvel in the wonder of it all. So I hope some of this has helped you. And uh, if I can help you in any way <clears throat> to transform uh, your life, to help you out of what might be this dream spell, maybe in, and moving in your life, your career, your uh, business, your organization, I am a transformation coach and mentor. I have lots of great programs to help you with. So please reach out to me. All the contacts are here below and I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Namaste.